How's it going everybody? I have a fun budget Rakdos commander. We're going to be using Carter Doom Scourge as our commander. It's a pretty spicy card because whenever it enters the battlefield, until your next turn, creatures your opponents control attack each combat if able and attack a player other than you if able. Also, whenever an attacking creature dies, each opponent loses one life and we're going to gain one life. This deck obviously works a lot better when you're playing against multiple opponents. It's a pretty interesting deck because you're making your opponents kind of fight each other and duke it out while you just sit on the sidelines. This deck wants to continually revive this card and blink it if possible so we can continually trigger it to enter the battlefield effect. While our opponents are fighting each other, we have cards that are going to continually do damage to them and ping them for life. Starting off with some cards that help us revive Carter, Feign Death, Supernatural Stamina, and Undying Evil are all going to help us revive Carter from the battlefield so we get another trigger from its effect. We also do have cards that sacrifice creatures so we don't have to wait for removal or our opponents to target Carter with card effects we actually can do it ourselves these next three cards are all quite similar two of them being enchantments it's kind of the same thing it's just going to help us revive Carter to get another proc off its end of the battlefield effect conjurer's closet is the most expensive card in the deck but it's pretty good at the beginning of each end step we can target a card and blink it basically back to the battlefield we can almost have like an infinite loop with our commander where we can continually blink it every turn and make our opponents fight each other so definitely a card you need it is a little expensive though we can sacrifice voyager staff and then blink a creature back to the battlefield and Pal Siege has two good effects. At the beginning of our upkeep, we return target creatures from our graveyard to our hand. This makes it nice if we sacrifice card or other creatures, we get them back to our hand so we can then play their effect again. Or if we do want to choose dragons, we're going to be pinging each opponent for two life while we gain two life. Both effects are pretty good, it's just going to depend on what you want to do during the game. Flame Rush Rider is awesome because whenever it attacks, we're going to create a copy of another target creature that's, that's also attacking. This will also trigger Carter's effect. Blood for Bones and Victimize are nice ways of returning creatures back from the graveyard to the field. Warmonger Hellkite is a 6 mana 5-5 five five of flying and all creatures attack each combat if able. What makes this even better is we can buff all attacking creatures by plus 1 to the end of turn. Thus, we can actually help our opponents kill each other even faster. Goblin Diplomats is another cheap way of just forcing our opponents to attack each other. Or just making it so combat has to happen. With Agitator Ant, at the beginning of our end step, each player is going to put two counters on creatures they control. Until so our next turn, those creatures attack each combat if able and they attack a player other than us if able. Giving our opponents creatures plus one plus one doesn't seem that good, but it kind of is because again, we're forcing our opponents to attack each other. Goblin Spellmaster has the effect. At the beginning of each opponent's end step, that player creates a 1 1 red goblin token with creatures you control attack each combat if able. Just again, some more ways for our opponents to attack each other. Everlasting Torment makes it so players can't gain life, damage can't be prevented, and damage is now in the form of Wither. I like this card in case some people are trying to prolong the game with either life gain or cards like Fog or something. This just makes it so damage has to go through. Dictate of the Twin Gods makes it so damage deals double now. And since we're playing Rakdos, I have to play a card like Havoc Festival. It's just too fun. Players can't gain life and at the beginning of each player's upkeep. They're going to lose half their life around it up. Super fun. We do have some ways of giving our opponents some extra creatures and tokens. When Slaughter Specialist enters the battlefield, each opponent's going to create a 1-1 one, one token. And whenever a creature and opponent dies, this card's going to get plus 1, plus 1 counters on it. Curse of Disturbance is allows to enchant a player. And whenever a enchanted player is attacked, we're going to create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. And each opponent attacking that player does the same. So kind of fun just again giving our opponent some more creatures. Whenever Varchild deals combat damage to a player, that player is going to create that many 1-1 one, one red survivors creature tokens. What's good about this is because we get to deal damage our opponent giving them tokens that they can then use against other other opponents dude is going to give all of our other creatures plus one and make it so whenever a non-token creature dies we can ping something whenever tectonic giant attacks or becomes a target of spell and ability we're going to be able to lightning bolt every opponent or we could exit the top two cards of our library and choose one of them until the end of our turn we can play that card some other ways we can ping our opponent is with these three cards. Each of these cards is quite similar. Whenever a creature dies, we're going to deal one damage to player, and then we're going to be able to gain one life. Calculating Lich has whenever a creature attacks one of your opponents, that player is going to lose one life. Court of Ambition is awesome because at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent is going to lose three life unless they discard a card. However, if you're the Monarch, they're going to lose six life unless they discard two cards. And Ember Wilds has whenever an opponent attacks you, if you're the Monarch, this card is going to deal damage to that player equal to the number of cards in their hand. Again, there's more ways to ping your opponent's life to make him hurt even more. We do run some sacrificing outlets in this deck. Carry on feeder and viscerous seer is going to allow us to sacrifice creatures at instant speed and get some additional benefit. Whenever Decipher Ball centers a battlefield, we get to sacrifice another creature. We're going to be able to gain some life and draw some cards. And Vermagorger has tap. We can sacrifice another creature and each opponent's going to lose two life while we gain some life. Now, and for some tokens, we can easily sacrifice. All three of these cards are going to give us some red goblins. We do run the Rattle Master, Krenko, and Legion Warboss as more ways of getting tokens, especially goblin tokens. And we also have some ways of growing these tokens so they become more threatening. At the beginning of each combat, Lagmos is going to allow us to create two elemental tokens. We do have to sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step. We can also tap this card and search a library for a card and put it into our hand. We can only activate this if five or more creatures die this turn, however that is possible. Oryx Slumlord has whenever another non-token creature dies. We get to put a 1-1 black rat on the battlefield and all of our rats are going to have death touch. 
And this Trojan horse is pretty fun because we get to give it to one of our opponents. And at the beginning of each of our upkeeps, each opponent is going to create some 1-1 soldiers. These three cards are going to allow us to draw some cards at the cost of sacrificing creatures, which again is easy to run in this deck because we have a lot of tokens. With Stormfist Crusader, everyone's going to draw a card at the beginning of our upkeep. So it kind of helps our opponent, but it also speeds up the game because we want them to be able to play a lot of spells and then attack each other. Faithless Looting and Read the Bones are going to help find the cards we need. Garna has whenever another creature we control dies, we're going to draw a card if it was attacking. Or we're going to be able to deal one damage to each opponent. Morbid Opportunist gives us the ability whenever one or more creatures dies, we're going to draw a card, however this ability can only trigger once. This also does say once each turn, it doesn't have to be our turn. Shriveling Rot has until the end of the turn, whenever creatures dealt damage, we're going to destroy it. Or until the end of the turn, whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, that creature's controller loses life equal to its toughness. We can also entwine it and cast both. By Force is going to help us deal with artifacts, and Chaos Warp is going to help us deal with any permanent that we really want to get rid of. Bedevil Terminate and Tragic Slip are some good removal options. Tragic Slip will almost always be casted for its morbid cost because of the way this deck is designed. The two artifact creatures are going to help us get some lands on the battlefield, and Prismatic Lens is going to help us filter our mana. Same thing with these three mana rocks, they're just going to help us get to our mana and make sure we're able to cast our spells. For some lands, we're running these three dual lands just to make sure we're hitting our colors. Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse are pretty basic in most commander decks. And Command Tower because you need it. Sanctum of Eternity is good because for 2 minutes we can tap this and return to our commander you own from the battlefield to your hand. This card is actually going to come up a lot because we want to continually again be making sure that our commander's effect continually goes off. One way to do that is just by bringing it back to the hand and casting it the next turn. And Bajooka is just nice to exile our opponent's graveyard. And we're running 12 mountains and 14 swamps. This deck is pretty spicy and fun, you just need to be playing against multiple opponents. It definitely helps if your opponent plays a lot more creatures. If they're mostly just playing control, it's not going to be as fun. Anyway though, let me know some cards you think I should have added to this budget deck. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed everybody. Stay tuned for some more.